I didn't have musical skill growing up. Like I just wasn't. It mm. wasn't a thing. Yeah. Until someone dared me in high school, yeah. and then you went into it. A bit I more. went into it, and I just got better and better and better and better. Hello everyone, welcome back to Foreign Gems. And this time it's episode 16. I finally learned the episode numbers. <laughs> episode 16. Yeah. Four months worth of content. Four months. Congratulations on four months. Yeah, content. Yeah. That's uh this like I was saying on a previous recording before we had to restart. This is definitely the longest time that I've worked on something like on a consistently like uploading way i said that horribly <laughs> but you know what i mean like every time you have to upload weekly yeah this is the longest streak i've had for sure probably for me as well mm-hmm. and i think when we started that was one of the reasons i think for me the biggest unknowns was can we con- can we keep it up yeah that's why i was like let's just record a bunch before we even release it yeah because um i find um and also we started with a mission because i for me anyways, I don't mind doing things, mm-hmm. but what I find I always struggle with later on is if it stops making sense, yeah. if I don't have a why, so we had a why, then we built the habit before it was even out. Yeah, I think that helps a lot with our consistency. Mm. Also, getting so much positive feedback, so thank you to everybody who has taken the time to listen to this podcast, to give us feedback directly on or indirectly just by viewing and all of that we we can see analytics on various episodes so we can see kind of what topics or what formats are resonating with you guys more um, which is really helpful for us to help determine the direction of this thing as you know it's like a work in progress so Mm -hmm. we're constantly learning things and you just learned you know video editing for a podcast recently yeah but the we just released our first uh, video episode with the one with Francis, which yeah. is about designing your own career. Yeah. Um, so that was a huge project. Yeah. Um, I didn't expect to take as much time, but uh, now learned a new software that we can apply going forward. Yeah. So um, yeah, learning more stuff. It's which is the purpose of this project for us. For sure. To grow as well. Yeah, it's a great learning platform because a lot of the skill sets that we're picking up as a result of working on this project are maybe not things we necessarily would have run of, mm. run onto, or maybe at least not in this time. So I, f- I feel like it's good to just learn something new, flex that muscle of the consistent learning. It helps in other areas of your life as well, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. I was actually talking to a teammate earlier that uh, even though I was using, I was learning video editing, the skill is actually transferred to UX work, which is uh, Figma. Yeah. So it's I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. And oh, speaking of feedback, I just checked, and the question we ask of people of the direction of our topics, mm. it's been hundred percent feedback so far. So they like the idea of the change of yeah what we're trying to do. Okay, excellent. Yeah, we just refined the mission statement a little bit better, and I think now. It, um, it resonates with more people which is good mm-hmm. and also it allows us some flexibility as to who can come on the podcast as a guest um, where the stories are coming from the various perspectives of different people that we can feature as well right. um, so I'm excited about the slight change in direction because uh, I think it yeah it just allows for more opportunities for us yeah for context um, in the first episode we mentioned that we didn't over plan anything and we'll build things as we go so to keep you along the journey uh, for the start, we we had a mission statement of Fur Jam is a is a weekly podcast bridging cultural gaps yep. uh, and providing foreign perspectives mm-hmm. to familiar topics through yep. the eyes of is true immigrant perspective or something. Whatever. Yep. Like it, that. Was it was long. It was long. <laughs> it was. It did. Yeah. So now it's uh, bridging cultural gaps by providing foreign perspective diverse uh, diverse perspective yeah. um, to career yeah, and personal and development. self-development yeah yeah so I feel like that's a much better elevator pitch I think people understand what the mission is and like who the mission pertains to a little bit yeah. better and also it's I think more inclusive in yeah. general so that's good I agree yeah. and so what are we talking about today yeah uh, 
the topic of today actually relates to what we're doing. You know, as we have been doing this, we're getting more intelligent, we're getting smarter, we're getting more brilliant, mm -hmm. <laughs> intense. You get what we're talking about? Yep. Today's episode is about intelligence. And the topic is broad because uh, just earlier I, I told Mark that we are getting good feedback on our new direction. Yep. The other direction we're going with is Mark and I will talk more about broad topics where we'll uh, look, the last, ep last week's episode was about success. And before that, we had done public speaking and we had done AI. Yep. So we'll look at things from a broad perspective and then we'll have guests on that will show you all different examples of how people are applying those things in their own different lanes that hopefully will speak to you more. Which I'm personally very excited about. I really like listening to people's stories. Mm -hmm. And I think it's nice when we share our perspective on the podcast. But I think it's even more engaging when we have somebody else who has displayed some of these attributes and we can ask them more questions in depthly and also of course find out other people's kind of journey journeys and how they got to where they are. I think all of that stuff is really, really inspiring. And like we talked about in a in a previous episode, I don't think it's even out yet, but examples, mm. the power of examples. So that's a that's a hidden hint <laughs> as to one of the episodes that will will be coming out. Um, and that one will already be out by the time you're listening to this, so like it's not really a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I guess to set the foundation, so as an immigrant, um, I have been able to see different experiences where I felt smart and intelligent, and then I'm in a different environment. I feel pretty dumb, and so I. It always got me questioning. Mm -hmm. you know what's intelligence anyways like um, how do we measure it what's considered intelligence and it's just a topic I've been fascinated about and recently I was reading about um, this thing or research by a guy called Howard Gardner yeah and he's a psych American psychologist and he has this concept of multiple intelligence mm -hmm. so there's like nine different types of intelligence so I thought it's something we can talk about you always, you always hear about the two, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm interested to hear what some of the other types are as well. Yeah. So we, for the two, what, what are the two that you know of? Uh, like your regular intelligence, mm. I guess like... Um, IQ. Power of, yeah, IQ. I, I guess like the rational mind. Oh, yeah. And then um, emotional intelligence yeah. is the other big one that you hear about, especially in the context of career, because usually they try to foster both of those mm. intelligence. The IQ intelligence is more so in uh, pertains to your execution of work, and then your emotional intelligence relates to how you are as a team player, yeah. or in some cases as a manager. Uh, we can look at the actual definition. <laughs> okay. So uh, EQ, which is emotional quotient, I didn't know that before. Oh. I just thought it was emotional intelligence. What yeah. makes sense? Intelligence so, quotient. Yeah. I, IQ EQ. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, is the ability to understand, use, and manage your own emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges, and diffuse conflicts. So, pretty much what you said. Yep. Yeah, it's how, yeah, it's how you manage your emotions in navigating relationships, uh, relationships mm -hmm. and situations. I mean, it's not always just relationships as well. It could be with yourself. It's also internal, well. yeah. yeah. So, I think the context that I had before was more so like in a collaborative setting but i realize it's also managing yourself in certain situations so it pertains to your management of emotions yeah. too okay that's interesting yeah that adds to my my own definition of how i thought about it so that's yeah that's eq okay and iq um has just always been your i guess uh, aptitude your yeah. ability to aptitude, understand great word, yeah. 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 yeah so but EQ, we'll leave EQ the way it is for now, mm -hmm. but IQ is what we're going more into today. Mm -hmm. So with all the nine different types. Okay. So, so I can start. Oh, so yeah. the nine different types are within IQ? They seem to, uh, to be honest, I think it breaks apart EQ and IQ into more of a spectrum. Gotcha, gotcha. But okay. a lot of them seem to lean more towards IQ. Okay. But it, it makes it more of a <laughs> spectrum, so it's not binary as it was okay uh, okay so I can read the intelligence and then we can discuss each one as much as them as we want to okay so uh, for context once again we haven't uh, practiced this so <laughs> yeah. I don't know where bear, any bear of this us. will go <laughs> as we discover this together yeah 
So we have the spatial, I'll, I'll explain what each one means later. Yeah. We have the naturalist, musical, logical, multiple, mm. existential, interpersonal, bodily, kinesthetic, linguistic, and intrapersonal. Mm. Do you have any one of them that sparks your interest that you want to start off with? Uh, the physical one is interesting to me. Bodily, kindness, yeah. kinesthetic? Okay. Yeah. That's that. That's something that I'd, I don't think I'd put together in my mind at all. Like as some of the other ones, I'm like, okay, they seem like subsects of some of the other intelligences. Yeah. But this one is one that I was not really even thinking about before we started recording. Ha. Huh, okay. Yeah. This this is interesting because for me, this was the one that I read and I was like, oh yeah, there's. I'm absolutely stupid at this <laughs> <laughs> entirely. I so w when you hear that, yeah. wait, is there a definition that goes deeper into it? Uh, there is, but I just add, I didn't write all that down. Okay, okay, never mind that then. But which which is actually better for this question? When you when you hear that, yeah, what does it make you think of? Like, what's the context that you're putting it in? So okay, there's actually a bigger definition. So it's like uh, I'm not defining it, but it involves the sense of timing and perfect perfection of skills through mind-body union. Mm -hmm. So coordination of your body, pretty much. Okay. So athletes, dancers, surgeons, craft people. Yeah, I I've, I've always said this. I don't have the talent for my hands. Yeah. I can't draw. I can't even write well. My handwriting is terrible. <laughs> Um, I used to be super fast though, yeah. so the athlete part, yeah. I definitely had that, so... You resonate with that? Yeah, so one, even within this intelligence too, I think they might even go deeper than that. Mm -hmm. There are nuances. Yeah, because I think like, for example, being able to move fast or maintain your body moving fast is slightly different from like hand-eye coordination. Right. And both kind of fit in that same umbrella yeah. of mastery over your body, Yeah. in a way. Uh, yeah, so it, uh, I'm sure there's sub segments in all of this, but it, I think like hand-eye coordination I knew was something that is inherent in some people more so than others. Mm -hmm. But to consider it a type of intelligence, that's really new and interesting concept for me. Do you think it's something that one can develop and work on, and it's like? Uh, it's a skill almost in a way, or is it something that's inbuilt and in you always? have like a gap between person X and person Y? I could be wrong, but I strongly have the belief that intelligence can be developed. Mm. Um, I don't know, you know, there's no <laughs> scientific basis behind this. And I like, I like science, but I have a strong feeling because there's so many things that I felt stupid at that I eventually got, except this one that we're talking about. I just mm. have never been able to be a good dancer ever. Mm. But musical one which is on the list as well I, which i didn't know until now yep um that's one of those that i i didn't have musical skill growing up like i just wasn't it wasn't a thing yeah until someone dared me in high school yeah. and then you went into it a bit i more. went into it and i just got better and better and better and better mm -hmm. so i do think some people have a an advantage in that field like musical mm -hmm. or or um I keep calling it physical, but I keep forgetting like the proper term. Bodily, tiny, static. Bo static. Bodily, calisthenic. <laughs> <laughs> bodily, K word. Yes. BK. BK. BK intelligence. BK intelligence. Yeah. I think um, some people have like an inbuilt uh, aptitude for it, but it can be developed. So like for the, the musical one, for example, there was this one uh, classmate of mine a long time ago. He could just hear a piece of music and translate it to piano. And of course he knew like some piano mm. already, but especially if it was like a piano piece or it was a piece that could be transcribed into piano, you just give him some time and he could figure it out. The thing that I thought was really interesting is that he didn't need to hear it a lot of times. Oh. He would just hear like once, twice and have all of the pieces kind of in there, yeah. be able to separate, okay, this is the bass part and like this is what I'd be doing for that. This is the pattern and tempo there. And then the melody part, he would understand that too. And then very quickly, he'd be able to like put the pieces together. Yeah. And he didn't go through that much for like he had some training in music and in piano, but not as much formal training as would be required for the average person in order to be able to replicate those same skills. So I think there's like an aptitude part to that for sure. And I think also 
just to comment quickly on the other types of intelligence, like the interpersonal one, for example, I think some people are naturally very in tune with the people in their environment, with how they're feeling. They know when somebody's uncomfortable. They're just aware of that. Uh, but I also think it's something that somebody can develop and get better at. Like the more social situations they mm. put themselves in, the more they make a misstep and learn, okay, maybe I, I shouldn't do this um, to this type of person. Like it, it makes them feel this way. I think these are things that you can learn. Yeah. Um, but some people have an advantage over others. Yeah, they definitely, uh, what you mentioned about are your classmates. Is that what, yeah. Yeah. In, they, we talk a lot about photogenic memory. And I think that's the same concept, but you know, for musical intelligence, where he just gets something once and it's just pictured in his brain. Mm -hmm. People, there are people who draw, who are like that. They look at you once and then they have it in their head, and for the next three hours they go to work. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not me. I'm like that with words. Mm. So that's why we talked about public speaking one, where I said I never prepare my. Um, I never prepare what I'm going to talk about and that's because I can see a word and the entire concepts like a textbook worth of ideas just comes to my head right away mm -hmm. that's how that manifests for me uh, there are some people that are servants you know, you've heard of like people who are just super great at just one thing mm -hmm. so your friend that you mentioned maybe that's his own mm -hmm. thing yeah. and it's interesting because when you meet people who are servants I, how do you call it? Savant? Savant? So, savant, I, savant? Think. I yeah. don't know. S A V A N T. Mm -hmm. People who are like that. Ones, um, objectively, you might think they're not that intelligent. Mm -hmm. Like many situations you put them in, they just, they just don't get it. But it's just not theirs. It's just not their intelligence. Yeah. But once you get them into their world, their zone of genius, as I like to say, suddenly they are like the best in the world. Mm -hmm. They're like, no one can beat them. Do you think you trade off some intelligence in other areas for a lot of intelligence in one? Like, say you find somebody who's really um, physically aptitude. <laughs> no, I'm never going to remember BK. this. Who has a BK. Lot of BK. Somebody who has a lot of BK. Do you think they have to give up uh, maybe interpersonal intelligence or um, what's the IQ one? What's the IQ one? Yeah. The aptitude. Yeah, well, it's, it's just aptitude. Just aptitude. <laughs> just aptitude. Do they have to give up their aptitude in, yeah, in that versus the other, or do you? I think that's a myth. Mm. I think there's a myth that you know you can only be. I mean, there's the ten thousand hours rose Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah, uh, he said you know the, the more time you spend on something, the better. Yeah, but but that's more so training. And yeah. I believe that I believe you can train in any one of these types mm -hmm. of intelligence, but a natural kind of predisposition towards a one particular intelligence. Do you think it comes at the cost of a, a diminished natural predisposition yeah. to another one? It it depends on how you know. If you look at the spec, the image that I looked at, you know, has a, it has them on a wheel. I'm not sure if they actually connect that way, but it depends on how close they are on the spectrum. So the intrapersonal and the interpersonal one. I think one develops the other. For me, I find the more I understand myself, the in intrapersonal, the more I'm able to understand other people. Mm. So like I didn't, um, I didn't have, now anyone that meets me is like, oh, you're personable, you're very good with people, you're this, you're that. I was not like that when I was younger. Mm. I, I mean, I struggled with that in high school. I just never had the right words. I never, it was just not my thing. Mm. But the more I spent, in Newfoundland when I you know was starting to build myself and I had a lot of time to spend with myself mm -hmm. the more I got to understand myself the more I got to understand other people mm -hmm. I had more empathy for people I'm like oh this is how when I say this to someone this is how you must make them feel okay noted mm -hmm. so technically it's the interpersonal one interpersonal one that I'm intro that I am developing mm -hmm. but it's helping with the other one on the flip side though when I was DJing and learning about music, that completely kept me away from the dance floor and, <laughs> and moving my body. So it made mm. me worse of dancer. So, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, definitely trade-offs when you're developing certain skills, um, for sure. Like I, I think a, a common one that's 
like a trade off is is the music versus uh, more so like traditional IQ. Yeah. Because I think a lot of us, like I think our bodies are naturally in tune with music to some degree. Like rhythm, I think, is a big part of just how the, the human body functions. But when you then put all your eggs in the basket of I'm going to develop my my logic and my mathematic um, intelligence, you can sometimes give up putting time into developing some of like maybe a music intelligence or maybe even some of the other types as well. I agree. There was a kid in my high school actually. He this actually answers two of the questions. So earlier on you asked, can this be developed? This kid, when he came to my school, wasn't, in quotes, special at all, at anything. But then he went, there was this year where he just came back from summer and he was this, he became this math whiz. Mm. And then I became obsessed. I was like, how did he get so good at this? Then I started understanding him. And I realized all he does in this time is just maths, mm -hmm. two for seven. And it became really good at that, mm -hmm. but it was still not good at other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a trade-off worth thinking about when you're in the situation where you need to develop one skill or another. Mm. I think trying to go for a more balanced approach, maybe there's one that you want to foster. And I think you should foster your natural gifts mm -hmm. to make them the, the best that they can be. But I think a lot of people excuse greatness in a particular area. Uh, sorry, they excuse weakness in a particular area because you're great at a different area. Mm. And I don't know that that's a, a positive reinforcement to give to people because then people become lazy with developing that part. Yeah. And like we spoke about before, you can develop these things. So I think you have not necessarily a responsibility, but it's good for you to explore the other types of intelligence and make sure that you are at least in tune with them and you are thinking about developing them, especially the interpersonal one. Yeah. I think that's one that people should really focus on. It's something that I had to focus on as well for some time. Like I was, I've always been quite sociable, mm. like making friends and all of that. But now I feel I'm much better at being in tune with how I make other people feel mm. than before. Um, before I was just kind of going with the flow, you know, like childlike play. And I noticed that I, like, I'm, I'm quite good at sustaining like, friendships and things like that. I, like, I, I know how to, I know how to respect boundaries and whatnot. But I didn't have like a, I didn't have like a, a, a method, a methodology towards it. Mm -hmm. But now I'm much more like reflective as a person in general. I think that just happens You're as wiser. you become <laughs> a, a, as an adult, you know? And so I reflect in situations where I feel like, okay, I think I might've misstepped there. What could be the reasons for that? And I'm also more open to question, asking mm. um, and speaking to that person directly and saying, I, I, it felt like maybe something was weird. Like, did I offend you? Like, um, did you not like something about our interaction? And get that feedback in order to improve how I approach a similar situation in the future. Yeah, I, I've had a similar you know, progression in mine as well. And initially I wasn't good at it. And then I was out time, I wasn't on social media at all. Cause this was when like Twitter started, first started. I was just, I <laughs> never had the right words. So it was like, I don't even know what to post. Mm -hmm. Then I had to snap out of it. I was like, you know what? I would just post stuff and just be myself. I can't, you can't learn in vacuum. You have to just make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And you know, hopefully you don't make any mistake that would, you, that you'll get canceled for. <laughs> but <laughs> canceled, yeah. I mean, trust. It all always goes, everything I say tends to go back to values, you know, just have good values and everything else takes care of itself. If you're not a naturally racist, sexist or homophobic or anything person, mm -hmm. you would not, it doesn't matter what comes out of your mouth, mm -hmm. you know, like what's the worst that can happen given your boundaries of good behaviors, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, so yeah, I found that I've gotten better just by practicing and you know you fail like okay next time i won't do that again just just keep getting better mm -hmm. i think it's incredibly encouraging to know as well that you can work on particular types of intelligence yeah because i think that especially early on people might push you towards the type of intelligence you're naturally good at mm. 
um, I, I think back to the same example of like being younger uh, if you see somebody is like a naturally good athlete your instinct as an adult I'm sure is to foster that as much as possible for that person and make sure they have every opportunity to express themselves as much as possible in that type of intelligence but later on when you realize you need to be a much more balanced person I think it's really encouraging to know that this, these are things that you can work on so maybe you're not that good at the logic and math side of things if you spend some time at it like you were mentioning you know 10,000 hours to uh, mastery you don't have to spend 10,000 hours at a particular type of intelligence but you can spend some hours and it will lead to some improvement in that field um, so I think it's worthwhile to, to pursue as well if that's something that you want to improve yeah, I agree. Once you said mastery, I realized that that was supposed to be Robert Greene, not Malcolm Gladwell. But I think Malcolm also mentioned that in one of his books. Um, one thing you mentioned earlier on, though, about people not having an excuse not to uh, improve, I agree on a personal level because I'm like that. I want to be as well-rounded as possible. Right. However, I understand that not everyone has that uh, luxury. Mm. You should use what you should work on the intelligence that is useful to you that's just it because if you're a musician and you are musically intelligent but you are singing the kind of music that you need to perform you need to be able to dance and move people you need to work on that part you yep. can't say there's no excuse for you yeah. you just have to yeah if you are a scientist that you are coming up with a most intelligent solutions in the world maybe you don't need to share with people that much mm. if you're spending your time doing that it might not be of service to the world in the way that you could maybe you don't need to be spending as much time yeah. on that but there's situations where i think it's you can actually foster your core talent by developing some of the other talents because they help propel that talent even further yeah yeah, that's what I was trying to get at with like if if you're say the scientist and you know you have the skill set in this area instead of just like putting on blinders and saying this is the only thing I want to be good at yeah it could be more beneficial for you to actually develop some other skills because you the end result is the same you still get very good at what it is that you do because I mean, it's your natural talent yeah but you're still able to have like a greater effect as a result of that if that's what you're going for I don't know some yeah. people might not even be trying to go for that so in, in that scenario, I think it's useful. Two concepts that I've, I'm just thinking more of that I even I am learning more for myself because I've always seen myself as a generalist and I realize that there is some value to specialize in. So like just the, in, in terms of economics, the division of labor yep. is just much more productive for mm -hmm. the economy yep. and also leverage. And the only way you can have or the one of the best ways you can have leverage is to be specialized mm -hmm. and leverage when you look at it from a physics perspective the more force is applied the more powerful the leverage yep and the way you can apply a force in your space is to drill down into it like yep. fully yep. so i do understand the value of being more rounded yep. But not just for the sake of I want to be well-rounded. It's yeah. you need to recognize when you need to step outside of just mm -hmm. your own bubble. Yeah. Because where I then I agree with you though is I don't like when people limit themselves mm -hmm. when they're like, oh, this is what I'm good at. I just I'm not the type of person that does this. No. Yeah. If you really want to, you can try. It might take you longer than it would take an average person. Right. But I don't think. There's nothing that anyone can't learn, Agreed. given enough time. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I I really like that. I, I really like that as almost like a key takeaway as well. I don't think there's a particular type of intelligence that is outside of your abilities. Mm. You know, um, I think even in the case where uh, you might be genetically or situationally predisposed to maybe be like less physically intelligent, for example, I think. I still think there's different small things that you could do to develop that if that's something that you wanted to do and the key thing is want like if you want to work on something you don't have to say no to yourself because you have historically not been that good at that particular thing I still think there's room for you to do yeah. whatever it is that you want to do if that's what you want to do um, <clears throat> this is an interesting one because it leads to another aspect of intelligence which is 
the story you tell yourself also determines how intelligent you feel. Mm-hmm. Like we talk about the body one. I've always been saying this story of I'm not good dancer on this. Maybe that's maybe it's a self fulfilling prophecy. Mm, yeah. um, I mentioned something to you. Maybe I'll we'll talk about it in another episode about just my family's background in Brazil and capoeira. Yeah. Now all of a sudden I've been watching videos on it and I'm yeah. like learning. And I'm like, wait, I can. I think I can actually do it a little bit. Right. And that same person, I was like, oh, that's not that, good body. Just a change in context. Just a change, Just believing that you know, like my people. Yeah know how to do this thing yeah. why can't i i should yeah. be able to and it just switch things and same thing public speaking i didn't know i was a public speaker yeah. until people started telling me yeah it's like i, I noticed this in you type of thing yeah mm-hmm. so uh unfortunately you know some of the geniuses in the world they are not shining because of the environment that they're in they're just not encouraged right you know if if you're in an environment that doesn't make you flourish that doesn't water your talents you would never grow you never and like like I keep saying the most um, the biggest luck I want in, in the world is my mom just she's just this woman that just encouraged anything that I want to do mm-hmm. I can't imagine being raised by another parent mm-hmm. how, how how that would have turned out yeah, could be a different person entirely man how you brought up is it changes your mindset from the get-go yeah. Um, which I think w- also has a big effect on that, um, like self gatekeeping. Mm. Like if if you're told like, okay, this is the path. There, you know, don't entertain these other interests that you might have. You grow up thinking those limiting beliefs, mm. and then they become reality. But if you're in an environment like you were, where you're, you know, you're being encouraged to pursue all the different paths that you show interest in. It gives you permission to show interest in lots of different paths right. which open up options for you you know yeah because the story that i told myself is i'm the person that tries different things yeah and then therefore it becomes true yeah uh, i actually had the conversation with my mom over the weekend we're just talking about you know how when i was in newfoundland i was young and somehow i turned out okay and just saying how some kids even though they are raised you know they are, they live with their parents they end up they turn to drugs they turn to all these yeah. things so we're just saying what could it what it could be. I was like, this isn't. I just had the insight right there. I was like, wait, maybe part of the reason is because you let me do whatever I want to do. She's like, mm-hmm. what do you mean? I was like, I just have the freedom to do anything, mm-hmm. so I don't feel the need to mm-hmm. find ways to express myself yeah, in a different to, way. To like rebel almost. Yeah. yeah. If you're like a kid who your parent forced you to do to be a lawyer, to be a doctor, mm-hmm. and you don't want to do those things, you hate your life. You, you would have to rebel. find somewhere to escape to be yourself somehow don't, don't you find you hate it when if even if you're gonna go do a particular type of thing mm. you are less inclined to want to go do that thing if somebody tells you to go do it 100 percent. Yeah. you know and i think that is like a similarity of the same situation it's like if somebody is telling you no 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 to this particular thing yeah then you're gonna have more interest in that thing as to like why, why not blah, blah blah but if if it's you're allowed to express yourself then you're likely just going to go in the direction of things that naturally interest you not the ones that have been put in your mind because there's like some sort of barrier there there's like a curiosity to the things you don't have access to true and so like i think being given access allows you to actually express yourself in a in a more true form i agree do do you have the freedom to do different things you wanted to try when i was growing up yeah yeah, I had a lot of freedom. I think there's some areas where it would have been more beneficial for me to explore that a little bit more. Like music is is the big one that comes to mind. I grew up in a household where I was allowed to spend time kind of doing whatever I like um, and, you know, hanging out with people, whatever friends I was interested in hanging out with, I was kind of allowed to do that. Um, I, I felt like I had especially when it came to like studies and things to pursue that way and career I had a lot of freedom in that but from the music perspective it wasn't something that was actively encouraged even though I showed like a lot of interest in it at a young age and I think that's the one area where like I feel like I had a a ton of freedom growing up but one thing that I wish I had more time to uh, I had spent more time on was my interest in music and I wish there was like more encouragement in that in that side of things that being said I think music still plays like an excellent role in my life at the moment like it's more of a hobby it's not something that I rely on for money or anything like that so there's no pressure on it it's it's more just 
um, selfless artistic expression. Like it, it's not, it's not an ends to some, it's not a means to some sort of end. Right. It's just something that I enjoy doing. So it kind of worked out in a way because I don't know that I would necessarily have enjoyed pursuing music. Uh, as my full time thing, yeah. Uh, but that is definitely something that I think back on and think like, I think I think it would have been nice to have a little bit more um, freedom to to spend more time on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely one part that my mom didn't encourage as much because yeah. when I DJ, she's like, "Oh, what are you doing at a club?" <laughs> like she didn't stop me, but yeah. there was that judgment. <laughs> yeah. And then I stopped. And she's like, "Oh, why did you stop DJing?" Yeah. <laughs> like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> I think I think too were like in the where we grew up there is like connotations to do with that like there's from the examples they've seen the people who were most likely to be successful were the people who followed this path and then you know they followed this career and therefore like now they're set so they're looking at okay who are the people around me who are set and what is the path that they took but that might not necessarily apply to the next generation but you can only teach from what you know yeah so i think like it what is it's never on purpose but Parents, it, it's their job to kind of shepherd you in a particular direction, hoping that, you know, you, you, to give you the most chance of success. And sometimes that direction, uh, like, cuts off some of the other interests you may have, which, like, I can sympathize, but at the same time, like, looking back, I'm like, damn, I wish I had a little bit more chance to, to right. explore that, you know? Yeah, different, uh, you know, different generations live in different society and nice. there's different opportunities. Yeah. Uh, I think in the last episode I mentioned, if you want to know where the world is heading in terms of careers, watch what the kids are doing. What are the kids, the kids interested? So, yeah. uh, which is funny, back to like, in terms of intelligence, music, musical intelligence is probably something a lot of parents, at least our parents in Africa, understood as intelligence. Mm. Like... <clears throat> Uh, music is a big deal in Africa now. Yep. It's like one of the top careers for any Nigerian now because yeah. of success of people like David Owiskid. David Doe's parent didn't want him to do music because, you know, he was not. That, David Doe's dad is like a billionaire. Okay. He didn't want him to do music because he was considered as something that unintelligent people would do in the society. Right. But there's a lot of intelligence to music. Yes. Like there's so much nuances to to sound like it's wild yeah i agree um and I, I can also see it from like their perspective like especially if they already have assets to manage or a business to manage mm-hmm. they might want to foster their child to be uh, prepared to go into that world rather than like have them explore their own natural uh, interests i think back to a time where like everybody was more so like farmers and things like that. If you had a big plot of land and somebody came home one day with, with a banjo and was like, I'm going to you know, tour the world. It's like, why would you do that when we have this plot of land that you could be taken care of and like it's, it's upheld us this long? True. You know, it's, it's hard for you to then encourage like a completely different, like de- a departure from what, is, what, what was the expectation. Yeah, I totally agree. So there's a few other types of intelligence I wouldn't say I know the most about these ones, but we should still mention them. Yeah. There's the naturalist intelligence, which what, is... What does that mean? Yeah, it's the human ability to discriminate among living things, so plants, animals, as well as sensitivity to other features of the natural world, so clouds, rock configurations. So think of people that explore, so people that live more like hunter-gatherers still, um, botanist, even chef, interesting. Mm. Uh, the botanist one definitely resonates. I you? think some people have like a green thumb, quote unquote, green thumb versus other. Uh, like some people just have an understanding, like okay, this patch of land I think is going to be good for growing something, or like if they're taking care of a plant, they just seem to know what it needs more naturally. Um, I, I think it's it's definitely a type, but it's another one that I didn't necessarily put a, a, a definition to in my head before you this. You don't even think about it. Yeah. You don't think of it as a form of intelligence. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, I mean, I can cook, so maybe chef part, yeah. but every other part. I did grow tomatoes there you go. just before I left Nigeria. You've got to. Yeah, the apocalypse is coming. You've got to be prepared, <laughs> man. You've got to know how to grow things. So maybe, I don't know. I, <laughs> I would rate myself still like one over five in terms of that intelligence. But, you know, yep. we, we're trying. Uh, there's also the 
as essential intelligence, so sensitivity and capacity to tackle deep questions about human existence, mm -hmm. such as meaning of meaning of life, why we die, and how did we get here? Yeah, I like to think I'm I'm pretty good at that one, because I really like to explore that question. Yeah, um, and try to think about it from even beyond the limitations, what what I perceive to be limitations in the way we process information. Like I think there's a lot inbuilt in humans that makes them think things have to be a particular way just yeah. because that's been of our experience but that might not necessarily be the truth one of the things i really enjoy to do as like thought experiments is to think outside of that box it's like what if the rules weren't the rules the way you know them to be or yeah. intuitively feel them to be um i don't know if that's something that i've necessarily fostered i think it's more it comes from a curiosity um, and i wouldn't say that i have like a natural ability for that like i, I wasn't gifted in that area but it's definitely an area that i've shown a lot of interest in and therefore have developed over time yeah i, I would say it's a very similar experience for me as well yeah. um i remember i started contemplating the meaning of life when i was like seven or eight yeah. like i didn't realize how weird that was mm -hmm. but and over time that that's a recurring theme like every few years there's just always a period of time where i'm like i get really deep into philosophy and just just trying to understand all those things I don't know. I, I just keep having the feeling that I've been there before. Yeah. So um, we are not the best at that. I don't know anyone in my network that can speak more deeply on this. But it would be nice to have someone who's like really super intelligent on this topic yeah. to come explain. Yeah, that'd be an interesting podcast for sure. The conversations that come from that would be amazing. Yeah. So we have interpersonal intelligence, which we both, you know, we. We will talk about this more uh, as, <laughs> as more topics come up in this podcast. Yeah. So I don't think we need to go too much into this. Yeah, uh, this is definitely one of the most important intelligence, especially in this world where you need people. Your network is your net worth. Yeah. You need people to get ahead in life. Not, necess not, not, not even necessary. Definitely don't mm. use people. You yeah. should be genuine. You should come from a place of you know wanting to be of service to other people. Yeah. Uh, but interpersonal intelligence is very important i learned this hard the hard way i used to you know be the lone wolf uh, mm. one you know until someone told me you're not an island no, <laughs> like, no one is an island so it's much more difficult to develop things in yeah uh, in isolation um yeah i think that's one of the more popular like people know that there is like this type of intelligence i think it's one of the more commonly perceived ones um, and personally, I think it's one of the ones that I would put, like I would rank really high in the order of importance for me to work on. Um, I think I have like some uh, innate ability to get along with people, mm. but it's something that I, I, I want to improve all the time. Uh, like you said, like relationships are really important and I want to be able to have mostly positive impact on the people around me. Yeah. And so like that's just one of the ways I can improve doing that. Okay. Well, maybe eventually we'll start looking at how to improve on this things um, yeah that would be great yeah so each one's like a, a pretty deep topic in itself yeah it is. Yeah. you didn't know we'd have so much to talk I about didn't intelligence, realize. Right? No, i thought we were going to talk about two different types of intelligence <laughs> really easily uh, <laughs> okay since we're on that there's another one that is right next but i'll skip that and come back to it intrapersonal related it's you know the in, inwards one the so one. this one is actually related also to the existential one because this says uh, it's the capacity to understand oneself, one's thoughts and feelings, and use such knowledge in planning and directing one's life. Mm. So it is evident in psychologists, spiritual leaders, and philosophers. Yeah. And these tend to be shy people. Uh, I think you'll be shy if you haven't developed the interpersonal one. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I th yeah, I think the, those two things might be kind of related, but mm. the intra the intrapersonal, I think, is actually I, I think it's easier to develop the in like the interpersonal one mm. than the intrapersonal one. It depends on your personality. If you're an extrovert, yeah, the interpersonal one is natural to you. you yeah, don't, I have a friend who does who can take five minutes to be by himself mm. i'm not kidding you yeah like I put them in a I, social situation i'll be in his house yeah. he will have like he always has like what 10 people yeah all the time 
I'll be in his house, there'll be like 10 people in his house. Yeah. And I'll decide to like just, you know, take a book or something and just, because he's he's he was one of my like close friends. Right. I just want to read or something. Once you realize that you're not having a conversation with him, he's like calling someone else, mm. asking someone else to come hang out. Mm. He just can't stay alone with his own thoughts mm. unless he's sleeping and he, yeah. So there, he's an extreme extrovert. Right. For me, I'm more of, um, I'm an ambivert. Yeah. I do gain, um, I'm free around people, I get energy around people, yeah. but I do need that time to be by myself, yeah. to be with my thoughts, yeah. to have that interpersonal yeah. self. It's almost like I see myself as a friend that I need to go hang out with at the yeah. same time because yeah. it gets lonely if I don't like talk to them. Yeah. Um, so I, I think depending on what your personal disposition is, one is easier than the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, there is the linguistic intelligence. Mm. So that's the, of course, as you'd imagine, language, uh, like poets, novelist, journalist, and public speaking, and reading, writing, telling stories, crossword. This one I've always been pretty good at this at a very yeah. young age. Storytelling. Yeah. Storytelling is the one that stands out a, a lot as something that's either natural to somebody or maybe something somebody has to develop for themselves. Mm. I think some people are naturally good at understanding like the ebbs and flows of a story and how to relate a story to a particular group of people so that they're interested. And I think practice definitely helps. Like you said, you know, you have a, a natural ability with this, mm. but I think you probably also improve it through your public speaking. Um, and through you know other work that you do as well, maybe even this podcast helps as well. But it's like a, a chance for you to foster that. But I think some people are definitely born with like an ability to understand how to like capture the audience, but in a in a way that is impactful, not necessarily like self-serving. It's like yeah. I know how to make this uh, point that I'm trying to make stick with these people or resonate with these people, or make these people feel a particular type of way. Um, that's something that I actually want to work on and improve. So uh, my initial journey through YouTube, this podcast, these are all avenues for me to explore that side of things and get better at it because I, real, I realized the power of storytelling like through my career. Mm. I think it's one of the things that differentiate um, companies from one right. another, for example, and whether or not a particular company is successful at having their product resonate with somebody versus not. Two identical companies could have the same product, but one company reaches way more people than others just because they know how to put that product in the context of a story that resonates with their audience. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, for me, I, I, I don't know. I think I was just lucky to have been around people who encouraged those things at the key points in my life. Because when I was younger, like, of, of course, I was in the podcast and all these things. Uh, I remember when I was in, like, grade six, the teachers would help get me to write essays as examples for people in grade nine. Mm -hmm. Like, three grades above me. Yeah. It was just something I was already, like, I don't know if they're trying to explain a concept to them about storytelling. Yeah. So they would, and when the class is not understanding it, they would just come get me, like, and I'll get my, you know, whatever class I miss, they, the teachers talk to themselves. Yeah. But, but I didn't know that that was not common mm -hmm. until the older I got. I was like, oh, people just don't do that. Yeah. And then the public speaking, we talked about that before. I didn't know I was a public speaker until someone pointed it out. Yeah. So the key thing that I'm noticing all of these things is, you know, just be luck. There's an element of luck as well. Yep. If you're in the right place with the right people that see that you're intelligent, mm -hmm. but also putting yourself in places as well. If you feel like you're not growing, you just have a feeling at all that you're not growing at any aspect of your life. Maybe you're not around the right people. Yeah, that's true. Because the people around you should be enabling you to be growing, not yeah. necessarily like you know patronizing you and like be telling you like, oh, you're the best, mm -hmm. but actually saying no you could get better at this like yeah. oh you know you're naturally good at this you could be even better you should try and like explore that a bit more or something yeah yeah so uh linguistic one i think that's one of the easiest one that anyone can develop mm -hmm. uh, but and that's the one that actually has a lot of like tried and true formulas as well there's like certain formats to storytelling that mm -hmm. you could practice um there's certain um 
things that you could work on such as like pacing and the way you control your voice for example like very like studied uh, like one-to-one -one applicable um what's the word i'm looking for Frameworks. tips almost frameworks yeah. that would help you develop this skill set some of the one other ones can be a little bit more arbitrary like the interpersonal one while it does have some frameworks that you could you know use the thing about using frameworks in that particular situation is sometimes it's the other person's very good at interpersonal as well they can tell yeah yeah <laughs> and then it can almost backfire so i think it's something that you just have to keep working on until it's actually natural to you i agree but i mean that's the that's the whole idea of mastery though you get so good that you throw out the rule books and yeah then you become so good and now you're just coloring you yeah. know in, in terms of like giving people uh, frameworks actually, interpersonal ones, something that I found that worked for me yeah. when I was in support, uh, the Apple, they had this system called uh, uh, th the three Fs, mm. feel, felt, found. Yep. So when someone comes with you with an issue, uh, you don't just say, oh, I'll solve your issue, mm. or you don't, don't, you don't just dismiss them, neither works. Yep. But what you do is you f feel, yep. you feel them. I totally understand where you're coming from. Yep. That totally makes sense. Yep. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Feel. Then they felt, then you take them where it's like, yeah. yeah, if that happened to me as well, mm -hmm. I would have the same reaction. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this happened to 10 of our other customers, they had the same reaction. Yep. And then the found is, but yeah. this is what we found this as a what, solution. This is what we did. So now they're way more lit, um, open to hearing. Exactly. Like that. And that always works. And you don't have to use it in back to what you said yeah. if you use it in that in your head you're thinking feel fell found yeah. you would always come off very robotic yeah. but yes. the old concept is meet people where they are mm -hmm. and then connect them to other people say you're not alone mm -hmm. and then say this is what this is my solution and it's just common sense it's like yeah. Yeah. Your, your feelings are valid yep. other people are feeling it mm -hmm. as a solution rinse repeat so to add on to that slightly mm. I love that framework um, and something that I've been thinking about more so recently that actually encompasses that framework but I hadn't heard of it exactly in that format is showing genuine interest in other people. Like true interest in other people yeah. will cover those elements regardless. Like if somebody is telling you about their situation, if you're truly interested in who they are where, and where they're coming from, you have no choice but to be empathetic to their situation, put yourself in their shoes try to understand where they're coming from. Um, the solution that you offer is going to be genuine because you want the best for that person. Um, and also, what was the third F? Found. Um, which is like the finding the solution, is it? Yeah, that's the last one. Okay, yeah, I think I covered that a little bit in the yeah. last thing I was speaking on. But yeah, I, I think it encompasses all of those elements when you uh, g genuinely care about the person that you're talking to. It also really helped me with um, listening so yeah. you know the concept of active listening sometimes i used to find i'm like if it's not a particular topic i'm incredibly interested in i'm now thinking about how i'm going to participate in the conversation right. rather than hearing the other person yeah uh, but something that helped me a lot is like always remembering like show like be genuinely interested and not show genuine interest be, be yeah. genuinely interested and you're going to ask way more interesting questions as a result because you're truly listening to what the other person has to say and you actually have like an invested interest in finding out more from that person. Um, and yeah, that's changed the way that I, uh, more recently, network for sure. So instead of me coming into a situation and being like, okay, I'm going to try my best to plug in, you know, the services that I offer and things yeah. like that. I'm like, forget about all of that. Just go and listen to what this person has to like solve like what is this person's problem and then speak from that perspective and sometimes it's got nothing to do with what i can do yeah. but because i'm genuinely listening i can also connect other things way easier so i'm like oh i know somebody who could help this person out it's not me but i know somebody else and yeah. instead of shutting off the conversation where i'm like this doesn't serve me i'm like i know a way to help you but it's it's not through me it's through xyz and you can put those things together as well yeah. And people really appreciate that. Like, if you truly listen to somebody, they are, they know. They know that they're being listened to in this case, and it's not just like two people talking to themselves, essentially. No, I, I totally agree. Um, I see the caring as more of an amplifier, though. Mm. So it's not necessarily in opposition. Yeah. So the feel, 
feel, felt, found. I, for like five years, I've been trying to make it fail. It always works. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> it just works. It just works. But yeah. the caring part, the reason why I said that is not in opposition is sometimes you can care and show care mm. and it still doesn't land well with the other person. Right. Because when I was younger, my problem was I just wanted to solve problems. Yep. So me caring is taking someone's problem and go fix it. And then yeah. the next day you show it to them, they're like, okay, yeah. who asked you? Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> so everyone has different definition of caring. Yeah, that's true. And you have to understand people's love languages. Yeah. Like what, you know, some people, if some, sometimes people rant to you, they don't want you to solve their problem. They just yeah. want to They just rant. want to be heard. So back to what you said if you yeah. use the feel felt found but yeah. you also care about the person yeah. you can from listening to them you're like okay this person doesn't really want their problem to be solved yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like wouldn't you agree that also comes from genuine interest in that person oh like, yeah that's for, what i'm saying they're not yeah. in opposition they're like they're complementary and that's where the intelligence of the person you have to know what tools are your d disposal yeah and know when to use them yeah because they're different for different like people yeah and for some people they don't maybe they don't need you to like resonate with them mm -mm. on exactly how they're feeling they're literally looking for the solution to the problem but yeah. like you understanding that about the other person allows you to be more effective as like a collaborator when you know that about them you know you're like this person really likes direct information you can't give them the solution though if you yeah. don't acknowledge even, yeah even someone yeah, even someone who like cares about solution if you just say okay i'll go solve it they're like wait you don't even know what my problem is yeah so that's where the i hear you yeah well we found our devs have found it so that it's you have to know how to use it if you mm -hmm. use it in a robotic way yeah you just come off wrong mm -hmm. but if you like okay this is tom tom doesn't have time to waste like yeah. tom i hear your problem our devs have found the solution we're yeah. working on it yeah it's still the same the framework yeah. but you Wait more towards the solution. Yeah. Whereas if it's someone, back to your caring part. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, when you care, I think you need to know. You know yeah. what to weigh things. It's always the three steps. Yeah. But it's like what? What do you put more emphasis yeah. on? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So it, uh, they all work together. There's a bunch more frameworks, but that's just an example. Okay. And in terms of the storytelling one, one that always works is the hero's journey. Yeah. Every story you've ever heard that resonates with you Always. is the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And the hero's journey, to break it out, is literally just and, but, then. Mm -hmm. You start with a goal in mind, yeah. but yeah. there's a challenge, yeah. then this is what happens. Yeah. Um, an another format for that, uh, for storytelling as well that I've learned is the same one that they use in films and in plays and stuff, is like three acts. Yeah. So like in the first act, you would introduce the situation and the people and then you give them some sort of overarching calamity. And yeah. then part two is like where a lot of the hero journey stuff would come. There's some development in the original characters as they try to figure out this problem. And usually in movies, they leave a bit of a cliffhanger where you're like, I'm not sure how they're going to get themselves out of this yeah. situation. So they go through like a bit of an arc. So they, they yeah, become who they need journey. to be. Yeah. And then it, it kind of like at the end of act two, it's kind of like, okay, yeah. are, are they gonna be able to? Is like the question that you leave them with. And then three is like the conclusion. Yeah. Um, and it works very well, especially for things like YouTube video and content creation. Like early on, you establish a situation and, and leave a question. Like, this is the problem. How will they solve it? Then B, this is who I had to become to solve the problem. And then C, this is how you solve the problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's interesting because even without storytelling, that's how life naturally progresses mm -hmm. sometimes too. Uh, yeah. It's like life wants to take you through the hero's journey. Hero's journey, journey every time. So that's the key takeaway from this is that you're the hero of your story. Yeah, you, <laughs> you write your own story. Yeah. Um, the last one, I mean, this is long right now, but yeah. we already expected that for a topic as broad. As, as soon as you mention nine different types, it's like we're going to go for a while. Uh, the last one is, I don't know much about this one, it's spatial intelligence. Okay. So the ability to think in three dimensions. Mm. So image manipulation, graphics, artistic skills, mm. um, active imagination, so, so like sailors, pilots, sculptors, painters. I was thinking more so even like layout, like interior design and things like that. Architects, right? yeah. yeah. But this one is very strange. See, back to what we said earlier on, there might even be more nuances. Maybe we should make our own. Maybe it's not just nine. Maybe there's 20. <laughs> Maybe there's some that interests. Yeah, because I'm like special. Like, I am, I, I think in terms of systems, I yeah. think like an architect. Yeah. But 
I'm very bad at direction. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible at direction. Yeah. I don't know where is east, where is not right now. I yeah. have no idea. But in terms of like a layout of a place, you can in terms make of, it work. In terms of a system, yes, I'm always yeah. thinking of systems constantly. Mm -hmm. So, I, in my head, I don't see those two things as the same. Mm -hmm. uh, man, it, it makes me think of um, the in intersect between spatial and maybe like the the bk one mm. where i love how we just give it a new name yeah this is the bk one you, you know, you know, you know for anyone that actually <laughs> is looking yeah. at this because i think it's very interesting how those two things relate yeah like i think for some people they're very aware of like okay i need to take a stride this big to cover this much space and mm. blah 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 and then they use like the the bk part to execute yeah so like it's like a combination of the two different ones and you, you mentioned an, a good example of this is like dancers. So dancers need to control space very well, mm -hmm. especially if they have like a partner or something like that. Um, but you also have to be, you know, well coordinated at, like in just your body. So it's your body in a 3D space. That's one type of intelligence, but how you move your body specifically is another type of intelligence. Right. And these two things come together um, in, in the case of dancing and, and even in some sports and stuff like that. So it's kind of interesting how they've split, they split them up and given them unique things. Mm -hmm. um, I actually like this idea of splitting them down a little bit because it gives you um, specific things to work on. Yeah. Um, versus trying to be like, okay, I, I want to be a better athlete, which is a really so broad, broad thing. Yeah. It, it, it takes a lot of different types of intelligences to do that. Uh, but this allows you to systematically break it down. Because think about it, some athletes, like uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, there's Xavi as an example. Yep. And then there's... Mm, let's just say Neymar. Okay. Xavi's intelligence mm. as a footballer is yeah. his understanding of space. He's much more mind related. Yeah, he's more of a spatial intelligence. He knows who will be here, who will be there. Yeah. And Neymar is more of his quick fit. Yeah. He knows how to move. He's fast. Yeah, he's fast. Important. He doesn't have as much map of the field as Xavi does, but he has that. So that that's two examples right there. Yeah. So yeah, intelligence is very interesting and you know the more we talk about it the more you realize everyone is intelligent on something yes. just find your intelligence somebody's gonna have some sort of unfair advantage in one particular way of these intelligences and maybe even some of the ones that are in the middle because i think like you mentioned before i think you used the word spectrum yeah very much the case um i definitely think there's areas of overlap like if you picture these as venn diagrams there's definitely maybe even some places where some people have an unfair advantage because they can use two different types of intelligences mm -hmm. really well together um, and that gives them some sort of plus uh, but the other thing that I learned through having this discussion with you is that because there's so many different types and then you can learn frameworks for improving your performance in certain ones um, whichever one that you want to work on and improve on you can so in terms of the story that you tell yourself it's important to know that if you truly want to make a change in a particular area of your life your particular intelligence you can apply frameworks that allow you to improve that or work on it over time. Yeah, exactly. Start with frameworks and you apply it at the wrong situation and you learn. You know, mm. back to what I said earlier on. You don't, you know, you fail, fall on your face, you dust yourself up, get back, get back up, up again. again. Like even this thing we're doing, we've made so much mistakes already. Uh, Y'all won't know because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's just how things go when yeah. you're creating things. For sure. Um, but yeah, this this was a great episode. Yeah, and that is also the hero's journey that you just mentioned. So we're just we're we're on our own hero's journey right now, <laughs> and yeah, we encourage you to pursue yours. If you want to share any information about some of the other types of intelligence that maybe we didn't mention or something that you're aware of, and you um, want to comment on that, please feel free to do that either on you know the YouTube video or anywhere else that you can comment. As always, like you can reach us on Instagram as well. Yeah. Um, Mac is creative.mac on Instagram. Feel free to send me a request or shoot me a DM. I'll always answer. And Ola? Ola, Ola King. Where I'm not Ola King, I'll probably, it would probably be just Ola King. Just Ola King. So yeah, reach out to us whenever you can. And this was Foreign Gems episode 16, 16 and on intelligence. Oh yeah, like on wherever you can, subscribe. We're starting to get a lot of five stars ratings. So anyone that's stars. been rating us, thank you. we appreciate you, we love you. It's thank so you so helpful. much. Keep yeah. adding more to that. And we're fully five stars right now, you know? Yeah. So don't ruin that for us, add more five stars. Yeah, ask for all we want. Yeah, Make it want. better for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep improving it for us. Yes, sir.
Right, yeah. we'll, we'll see you in the next episode. See you later, James. <laughs>